Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to talk to you guys about Thanos. Now, this is not a video talking to you guys about how badass Thanos is per se, or how I cleared Infinity Thanos with him, you know, last week and this week and stuff like that, whatever. It's not about any one specific thing about the character, but it's more about um, how the character. Uh, it instills a kind of feeling in in me at least and uh, I'm guessing uh, and I'm hoping to hear from, from from some of you guys that watch the videos that have Thanos unlocked that have him you know uh, all the way up to six stars because that's where most characters shine of course um, and basically what I'm what I'm trying to get at with the video is that uh, Thanos is a grind yes no doubt about that he's twice as much uh, in in costs as any other world boss character. So for the price of Thanos, you can literally get you know Proxima and Corvus, or Super Giant and Ebony, or you know uh, Black Dwarf. And why would anyone get Black Dwarf? But uh, Thanos is is on his own. It's lonely at the top, as they say in the business. Um, so. Yeah, Thanos is, is, is a huge grind, and uh, it's one that a lot of players avoid, uh, even if they can grind for uh, world boss materials, because it's just one character. Now, uh, now, thank you, I would like to repeat, that's so nice. I really like that feature where they put that in there. Uh, I think it's great, and it's very clear what's going to happen when you press the OK button. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, yeah, Thanos is just a huge grind, and I remember... Uh, pretty much every week that I would clear, every day that I would clear world bosses the, for the five times, I would count up my debris, you know, and I would recalculate, and I trust me, these calculations would take fucking hours, because you guys know how I do with numbers. So it was like chalkboards and fucking, you know, papers on papers on papers, you know, I felt like Snoop Dogg minus all the plants. Uh, there was just papers everywhere. And, uh, yeah, I would do my calculations to, to re, re-analyze and re-discover uh, how much I needed left towards Thanos to get him to six stars, of course. So, you know, and I would break that down into days, into runs, into, like, average debris per run. You know, what if I get really lucky and I get, like, a, a rank four blank antimatter? What if, you know, like, Net Marble's fucking RNGesus just rides up my ass for like a week straight and I get this crazy good drops. You know, what if Harambe comes back to life? Fucking dicks out for Harambe. But anyways, it was honestly constantly on my mind when I was playing this game. And it was something that I was so looking forward to. Now, of course, I realized that I might be in the minority here and most people might be like, Cynicalix, you're a fucking idiot. You're looking forward to like, you know, Thanos when it's just like this drivel, mindless grind fest, and uh, it's just another character. Well, yes and no. Um, I hope, you know, I, I hope that this is reaching the right audience, and I hope that you guys are the right people to hear this, because that's really what lo what I love so much about this game. And uh, call me crazy, but I actually, I might have gotten, I can't, you know, it's hard to gauge something as subjective as, like, enjoyment and, and happiness and excitement, but I might have gotten more enjoyment out of this game when it was... Uh, a had challenging content and B was challenging to establish and to like grow new characters and and to really feel the the power in those characters um, because of the way that they design characters now and because of the the limits that some characters push the game to shout out Shirog shout out you know Thanos but Thanos is kind of in his own league so it's basically just Shirog and uh, Loki and a couple of other characters it's a very short list but because of where certain characters push the game to and the, the ceiling that they set, um, all the other characters that come out, like they do have certain quirks or they have certain functions that make them really cute or fun to play or unique. You know, Songbird's auto attack, world boss clears, Wiccan has all his teleportations and he's gay. You know, Gwenpool is obviously just uh, trying to appease fans of another superhero that's much more popular. Um, but you know, there's nobody that really stands out as, like, super OP or, like, super worthy. But with a character like Thanos, you feel like, at least I feel like, he just absolutely decimates everybody. I mean, like, it took me a good 20 to 30 tries timing Sharon Rogers' uh, attacks and her buffs and stuff like that and the 3-star skill before I beat Infinity Thanos, okay? 
I tried with regular Thanos, and I got it on, like, the fourth try. My literal fourth try um, playing with the character. And I hadn't even been playing with Thanos for that long before I got that kill. So I wasn't even yet comfortable with his skill rotations and, like, what to do if you're in a tight spot. You know, what to do when the ball starts slapping your chin like a rotary blade at the casino. You know, it's just, like... The guy's absolutely bananas. Like, in timeline, if I don't face another Thanos, it honestly feels like a joke. Of course, there are, like, there are, there's the odd Sharon Shirag or Sharon Rogers, who's, like, super uh, OP with, with an obelisk, and she can kill Thanos in one shot. Yeah, I understand that. But when I lose to those kind of characters, it just feels, it feels kind of cheap or kind of, like, lucky. But honestly, it feels actually dirty. I actually need to scrub down after I've been manually playing with Thanos in, like, battle world or timeline or even like an alliance battle because he feels like so broken and that satisfaction of getting that character uh after all those like long months of grinding and having the character be as like rewarding as the grind was is just like insane and i really like that feeling and i don't i hope that netmarble doesn't take it away i know that a lot of new players and a lot of players who struggle with world boss are going to hate me for saying this but i actually think that the world boss grind in order to establish like a super powerful character, I think that's the way to go. You know, I would not be angry or I would not be upset with Netmarble if from now on, let's say, when they release a new patch with like four new characters or six new characters, that one of those characters takes like a month to get. You can't use tickets on them. You can't kind of like cheese your way or like throw money to get that character. Now, of course, you could throw money to get black uh, antimatter when it goes on sale and you could get anniversary packs on anniversary packs for Thanos but that only puts a small dent I mean an anniversary pack is 800 chaos or 800 uh, black antimatter Thanos costs almost 9,000 antimatter so that's like a tenth so you'd literally be spending like tens of thousands of dollars in order to get him so I'm okay if it's that kind of wallet grind but what I mean what I mean is for the general majority of players who have him they did it through traditional grinding and I would not I, w I would like it actually I would welcome and invite it if uh, Netmarble did that where they're like okay you know what this new character they're gonna be OP they're gonna have like this skill or that skill they're gonna be like broken in this specific area but the only way to get them is gonna be from like traditional month-long grinding um, and I kind of I kind of uh, have developed this um, this theory or this kind of uh, explanation for how I feel about playing with Thanos and how I'm sure that I felt, you know, almost a year ago when I got like Ronin into six stars for the first time because that shit took months, literally. Uh, but it was one of the most satisfying feelings because I put all my energy and my effort into that and to finally see it come to fruition and be like a satisfying payoff and a good investment, you know, an investment that takes you like less than a week to realize that that flavor and that 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 feeling you get from it, you know, that rush of blood to the head is gonna uh, fade after a week or less, you know? So, um, but I got I got this kind of idea or this this kind of gestated and kind of cooked and simmered in my uh, in my tiny lizard brain. When I read this, this weird article, it wasn't originally in English. I don't know what language it was originally in. It wasn't Korean. Um, but uh, it, it likened or it compared, it was on a forum, I think, so it wasn't really an article. But anyways, it compared uh, Future Fight to Diablo, uh, like the original PC Diablo from like 90 or 91, and, or maybe 95, I can't remember honestly, but I played the shit out of that game. Anyways, um, yeah, and it's like that kind of game is your traditional ARPG grind fest where you just spend hours killing these certain mobs trying to get like a sick drop. Um, I would have, like, I would love it, and I guess that just speaks to myself as a gamer, but I would love it if they introduced some of those uh, aspects Sorry, I got a burp. If they introduce some of those aspects into this game, like if there was a chance when you're playing a story mode mission that you could get like a really sick drop, like a five star obelisk or something, and like the story mission that you had to grind would rotate on different days, or maybe it was like uh, a secret mission and it wouldn't tell you which one of the story missions it was um, until like you did something in the game to unlock it or you found clues in other missions. Like there's lots of different ways that they could go about doing it and introducing this kind of like um, artificial, almost like Skinner box uh, psychology to, to grinding. If you guys don't know what a Skinner box uh, uh, theory, not theory, it's like a Skinner box uh, test or um, method, I guess, or experiment. 
uh, look it up. It's really, really interesting, and it will kind of enlighten you a little bit about games, and it did, I know, for myself. Uh, but anyways, that's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is that um, I kind of have realized something from playing Thanos post-grind, post-Thanos grind, and it's just like uh, uh, holding his balls in my hands uh, after months of like, you know, grinding together to create the materials to manifest his balls uh, is a really satisfying experience. And the weight and the size and the, the kind of magnitude of holding them in my hands finally after so many months of, um, of wishing for them and hoping for them and playing for them uh, feels awesome. They just feel great. The left one in the left, the right one in the right, they just feel really great. And um, I'm, I'm wondering, as well as an aside, I'm wondering how you guys feel about it. And I'm wondering uh, if there are any Diablo fans out there who um, play this game now. I'm not sp speaking so much about Diablo 3. It's had its ups and downs. It's a good game. I'll give it that. But uh, mainly talking about the Diablo 1 and Diablo, Diablo 2 fans out there. I'm curious uh, if there are any of you watching these videos and, and what you guys think of my, um, my, my video, the discussion, the, the comments, the the garbage that's that's flowing out of my mouth currently so uh, yeah that's just that's just my feeling uh, and my thoughts on uh, on Thanos guys apologies if the video seemed a bit scatterbrained uh, but it's kinda difficult to pin down exactly what I'm thinking or or feeling uh, specifically and I know it's just a video game so it's you know uh, come on Jim pick up your toys and get the fuck out of here but um, it's something that I wanted to share with you guys, and uh, hopefully you get it. And if you don't, uh, probably sh you should th seek therapy, uh, because uh, you might need help uh, after what you've heard. So uh, if you like what you see, guys, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.